What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. If you're joining us from YouTube, if you are joining us from the podcast, today we're doing things a little differently. As you know, I like to kind of mix up the content that I put out for you guys just to keep you on your toes, keep you like some ballerinas out there. What we're going to do is um, I made this video uh, like two months ago, and I also made it like five months ago. Basically, I e each Wednesday on my Instagram, if you're not following me on my fantasy football Instagram, I highly suggest that you do that. It is BDGE underscore fantasy football. Every Wednesday, I put out what I call a wild stat Wednesday. So I will find a, a crazy stat or fantasy football stat or NFL stat or whatever it may be. And uh, I post it onto my Instagram. And, and usually these are just stats that I find while I'm researching different articles or different videos, things like that. And for the most part, they don't always come with analysis. They're just random stats that I find. And you guys can kind of dissect them and pick, um, pick, pick them apart for what they are. But I'm just going to scroll through since the last video ended off with this wild stat. Like I did this exact video, but with my previous wild stats and I wanted to wait a while so that the next time, which is this time that I did it again, uh, there'd be a whole bunch of new stats that I can get out to you guys. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen all of these already. Or if you follow me on Twitter, I tweet some of them out, but either way, you'll get a, a pretty cool, pretty cool piece of content. I think I'm putting out there for you guys today. This was the last one I've, uh, I put out um, for the wild stat Wednesday. So th the last video ended with this one. And it was over the past seven seasons, there have been seven times where a quarterback has finished as a top five fantasy quarterback while throwing for fewer than 4,000 passing yards. So it was Cam Newton four times, Russell Wilson twice, and RG three. So if you're projecting a guy to throw for less than 4,000 yards, he better have rushing upside like Cam, R Dub, or RG three. Um, and also on my Instagram, I put out, so I have Wild Stat Wednesday. Tips and Tricks Thursday, where I put out something uh, fantasy football related that's a tip and or trick that'll help you out. Every Friday is Busty Friday, someone who I think has some bust potential. Um, Saturday is Stay Woke Saturday, so kind of like a sleeper, undervalued. Sunday is just sell my shit Sunday. You know, I put out value six six days a week, and maybe you guys will buy something from me on the seventh day. Monday is just recapping my In the Muck Monday video. Tuesday is I put up the, um, the ADPs, the current ADPs from four for four and uh, in, in a carousel image, as you can see here. And I just break down two or three guys that I think are either undervalued or overvalued. And I break them down in the section, the caption section right here, you can see. So it's a lot of value that you guys don't get from my YouTube channel that you can get from me on my Instagram. So I highly suggest you guys follow. And this is where the Wild Stat Wednesday led off that we haven't seen yet. Tennessee running backs combined for 50 receptions in 2017. So Derrick Henry, DeMarco Murray, whoever ended up else catching a ball back there. There were 14 running backs in the NFL that single-handedly outcaught the Titans' entire backfield. So that was another reason why Tennessee Titans running backs disappointed heavily because they weren't catching any balls in a day and age where tons of running backs do catch passes. And now, of course, you have Matt LaFleur coming over <laughs> excuse me, to Tennessee, and they, they picked up Deion Lewis, so I expect them to absolutely crush that number this year. But 50 passes, that was an NFL low, and 14 running backs had more than that. I'm just going to scroll piece by piece, and uh, you'll see some random-ass pictures in here that are from my personal Instagram. If you want to follow me on my personal Instagram, because that's the only person I follow on here, I'm trying to get that like m, &M ratio where I eventually get like 10,000 and I'm the only person. That'd be pretty trill, too. Nick or Um You've probably seen this in some of my videos before. This is the next Wild Stat Wednesday. These are the average fantasy football wide receiver two finishes for Aaron Rodgers. So in an Aaron Rodgers-led offense, the average wide receiver two finishes with 104.5 targets, 70 receptions, 991 yards, eight touchdowns. So... Um, that that's crazy numbers for a wide receiver too. A lot of a lot of teams wide receiver ones don't hit those numbers. Uh, obviously, I discluded 2013, 2017 because Aaron Rodgers didn't play in the majority of those games. So these are the numbers that since he took over as the full time quarterback there, and he played in the majority of the games. These are the wide receiver two finishes. The difficult part is predicting who the wide receiver two is in Green Bay because normally we would assume that we know. Like this year, we think it's Randall Cobb, but he had that surgery on the ankle. 
Then he was walking around with the boot. Then they said he's fine. And then he just left practice. Well, I'm filming this on Monday, August 6th. If you're watching this, I'm actually on a flight on my way to Cancun, Mexico uh, to suck down triple digit margs. My, uh, my draft guide is going on sale tomorrow, Thursday at 3 o'clock. If you use the promo code triple digit marks, but you'll see that if you follow me on Instagram, that will be my tips and tricks Thursday post. Anyways, um, what was I saying? The difficult part is predicting this, right? Because Randall Cobb now uh, re-aggravated the ankle that he had surgery on. So is he going to be healthy enough to play for the Packers when the season starts? Is it going to be Jerome Allison? Is it Jamon Moore, who I really, really like as a rookie over there? So keep your eye on Jamon Moore. I think he's someone who could absolutely make an impact. He's a really, really good athlete. He dropped in the draft, but he still was the first wide receiver that the Packers picked in the draft. Of the three wide receivers, there is some hype coming out of him, uh, coming out of camp about him. So um, Jamal Moore, Geronimo Allison, Randall Cobb, we don't know. Whatever it is, though, it is uh, going to be a money-making spot because it is extremely valuable to be the wide receiver, too, there. Okay. In 2017, the 49ers quarterback, C.J. Bethard, completed six passes of 40-plus yards. Quarterbacks that completed fewer than six passes. So fewer 40-yard passes than C.J. Bethard last year. Cam Newton, Eli Manning, Jameis Winston, Joe Flacco, Mitch Trubisky, Tyrod Taylor, Deshaun Kaiser, Jay Cutler, even Aaron Rodgers, who had more passes, even though he was in a down year, a limited year in the number of games, he actually had more pass attempts than C.J. Bethard and completed fewer 40-plus yard passes. See, these wild stat Wednesdays aren't always, there's not always like a predictive statistic in them. They're just crazy things that I find along the way. And I, I like to share them with you guys. But this is kind of crazy that he had more 40-yard passes. Oh, make sure you go check out my man's The Jersey Jungle on Instagram if you're looking for authentic jerseys. He hooks them up. They're like starting at $40, uh, NBA, NHL. Um, MLB, like whatever you want. And uh, if you drop, you just go DM him, the Jersey Jungle. That's literally his name on Instagram. And he could hook you up. Like, look at all these custom jerseys. These are dope. He's got a, a Jamal Anderson throwback Falcons one coming for me on the way. If you drop uh, my name or just tell him Big Dog sent you, he'll give you free shipping. Unlike those like Chinese fake authentic manufacturers who charge you like 25 bucks for shipping. So check out the Jersey Jungle. Tell him your boy sent you and you'll get that hookup. As always, you know I'm always looking out for y'all. In 2017, I was looking at the tight end position. Last season, the Arizona Cardinals tight end Ricky Seals-Jones led all NFL tight ends in fantasy points per opportunity in both standard, 0.56, and PPR, 0.74. The next two closest ones were Rob Gronkowski and Trey Burton. So, as you can see, I mean, Ricky Seals-Jones only caught, I think he only had like 28 targets. So, obviously, those numbers are skewed by a limited sample size, but it shows you the type of athleticism and the type of damage he could do on a small limited sample size. We have to see what happens with the off-field issues, those reports about him, you know, shoving like a hotel attendant or a bathroom attendant or some shit. Um, I read the story behind it. It was like he really had to use the bathroom, and he went into like a, it was either a restaurant or like the lobby of a hotel, and he... And he wanted to use their bathroom, but they said it was for guests only. And he wanted to, he just like pushed his way through. So I feel like it kind of got blown out of proportion, but the league still might punish him. So I still probably take him at the back end of drafts, but it does hurt his stock a little bit. Hang. Wild stat Wednesday, Russell Wilson. This was a popular one. This one kind of blew up on the page. I had more likes than I think anything I've had before. So in, in Seattle last year, and this is per Rich Rebar, I think I, I, Saw it on, a, or I heard it on a Roto World podcast. The Seattle Seahawks scored 38 total offensive touchdowns last year. 38. Russell Wilson passed for 34 of them. So 34 of the 38. That leaves four left. Russell Wilson ran for three. So Russell Wilson accounted for 37 of the 38 touchdowns in Seattle last year. The entirety of the Seattle backfield rushed for one touchdown. Between McKissick, Procise, Rawls, Chris Carson, all these dudes, one single touchdown. It was J.D. McKissick. 
He scored a 30-yard rushing touchdown in week four against the Colts, and the Colts allowed the fourth most rushing scores in the NFL last year, so not a surprise that it came against them. But Russell Wilson was the entirety of the theme last year. That was me faded. We went to Agave. If you've never been to Agave in New York City, if you're from New York and you've never done brunch at Agave, you ain't actually from New York. That is the absolute goat brunch spot. The margs they pour, oh my God. Oh my God. Bah, bah, God. Another wild stat. Let's get it. Um, so, this was a company I got on a phone with a phone call with, and this guy actually told me this statistic per Adam Weinstein. He is the CEO of ThriveFantasy.com. 3% of the players on DraftKings and FanDuel win 90% of the money. Guys, stop playing DFS. Stop gambling, honestly. Stop gambling unless you're in the 3%. This is like America, where you ain't really making shit unless you are the shit. You know what I'm saying? Stop playing DFS. A lot of you guys ask me if I play DFS. You play DFS? It's like, nah, I'm, I don't gamble, bro. Season long ain't a gamble because it's easier to predict what's going to happen over a long period of time. DFS, when you're when you're betting on a week over week basis, that shit is gambling. It's gambling. Hang. What else we got on this bleach? Tyreek Hill's last 13 touchdowns have come from 30 or more yards out, including every single touchdown he had in 2017. That's actually that's not even wild. That's just fucking insane. 13 touchdowns in a row have come from 30 yards out, which is obviously unrepeatable, but that's also the type of player Tyreek Hill is, and that's counting, receiving, rushing, punt returns, kick returns, and things like that. But still, that's out, that's out of control. I'm excited to see what happens in the Chiefs' offense, to be honest with you this year. I really think it's Sammy Watkins' is fucking year to do his dang thing. Where are we going? And if along the way... Where are you, Wild Stat? Oh, there you go. Per Mike Clay of the NFL Network, or NFL.com, I don't know. An NFL high, 32.8% of passes directed at Titans wide receiver Corey Davis were off target last season, meaning he had no chance to even catch them. So, I talked about this in uh, high upside mid-round league winning picks. Damn, that was, that was tough to say. I don't even know if I said that right or if I put some words backwards in there. But y'all get the point. In that video, I, I, I broke down Corey Davis and why I think he's due for very, um, very much of a positive kind of regression year this year because the other wide receivers on the team, uh, I believe it was Eric Decker and Richard Matthews, their off-target passes were around 24 or 25%. So it was just weird that Corey Davis's number was so high. I think it was more of a bad luck thing. So Mar Marcus Mariota is much more of a uh, an accurate quarterback than the numbers showed last year. He's good at short and intermediate passing ranges. So Corey Davis should bounce back and see a lot more targeted passes his way, which is obviously a good thing for him. Where are we going? Nip along the way. Over the last three seasons, Golden Tate has played in 18 games, one playoff game included, in which he has seen six targets or fewer. So, 18 games over the last three years, where he's seen six targets or fewer. So, games that he's seen six targets, and that's a decent workload. He has hit 60 receiving yards in zero of those 18 games. That boy needs volume, bro. If he's not getting the volume, he ain't getting the yardage. Hang. Where are you going? See, I tell you, bro, I, I really diversify my content as best as I possibly can for you guys, and I really try to make it a huge differentiator on this. But, uh, yeah, if you want to check out all the stuff that I'm putting on, on Instagram, obviously go follow me again, guys. It's BDGE underscore fantasy football. And this is a cool uh, a tweet that Scott Barrett put out. It's not a wild stat, but I think it's cool to see anyways. So we looked at games in which the rain or snow was um, impacting players' scores. Uh, so since 2000, he says, by my data, quarterbacks average 1.51 fantasy points per game below their expectation uh, in the rain. They average 1.33 fantasy points per game below their expectation in the snow. So he goes by, he goes by position. And he shows you their fantasy points by expectation and how um, how the uh, weather affects them. So you can see in the snow, a lot of players play much worse. Uh, so kicker, obviously, that makes sense. Quarterback, 
running back, what you see is a plus here. Uh, that makes sense because if it's snowing, you know, that tough weather, teams tend to run the ball a lot more. So the, their volume is naturally going to be a lot higher. Um, but then again, this is, the, this is like very small numbers if you think about it. Like when you, you see the plus or minus and you're automatically like, oh, wow, it's much worse and much better. But realistically, on average, like what is 0.27 fantasy points is really not a huge impact. But like 0.15, that means like, guys, if your quarterbacks are playing in the rain or in the snow, expect them to do a lot worse. And same thing with kickers. I know it's hard to like actually have a strategy when it comes to the kicker position. But if they're playing in the snow, if it's bad weather reports, I would highly suggest like going with another kicker. Same with the wide receiver. It's almost a full point less in the snow. So something to be conscious of. Yeah, look at the house. This is from the Clap and Cheeks party. If you haven't seen that vlog, I put up the vlog uh, last week of the party. And I mean, it was like a 35 minute long vlog. And I talked about a lot of other stuff, including like the business side of fantasy football and some other cool stuff. But go check that out on my channel if you have not eat. Yeet, yeet. That's the champ from the E-Town Get Down. I finally gave him my, uh, finally gave him the belt that we have. If you see down here, completely customized the E-Town Get Down champion. That is from Fantasy Jock. So I guess we can plug the sponsor of today's video. Where art thou? I don't know where the ring is. Oh, here it is. Let me get the belt real quick. So this one here is the normal belt that they, uh, that they have on their website. But as you can see on my Instagram, they... Also do completely customizable belts. And you see on there, it says E-Town Get Down Champion. It also has the team names engraved on the sides right here. So that's why Fantasy Jocks is the number one leader in the industry for your fantasy league equipment. Doesn't matter if it's football, baseball, basketball. All this stuff is fully customizable, guys. They have everything on there between belts, rings, trophies, live draft boards. If you do a live draft with your friends, it's Fantasy Jocks. Dot com use promo code take 10 or taco corp that's t-a-c-o-c-o-r-p get 10 percent off your order all you got to do is have everyone ship in five bucks seven bucks nine bucks and you can get yourself a belt that lasts forever a ring each year for the champ so you know it's real or a trophy the trophies are pretty sick too i haven't actually got one yet but i might ask him to send one over to me um they're, they're big they're real they're they're really high. all this all the products are really high quality um, being completely honest with you guys, very high quality. I've been using them for the last three or four years in my big money league. The trophies, you can get the team names inscribed on them as well. So um, definitely go check out fantasyjocks.com. Uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for some big dog swag, we got a lot of it on the website right now. We diversify in the revenue in many, many ways. Okay, so... Since the year 2000, so we're in 2018, we're going back a while, only four wide receivers, four fantasy wide receivers has finished as a top 17 fantasy wide receiver while seeing 95 or fewer targets. So if you're seeing 95 or fewer targets, there is virtually one out of every four years, we're going to get a guy who sees 95 or fewer targets and finishes as a top 17 fantasy wide receiver. Those were... Last year, Stephon Diggs, 95 targets, wide receiver 17. Sammy Watkins in 2015, 93 targets, wide receiver 17. Deshaun Jackson, 2014, 95 targets, wide receiver 17. And Greg Jennings, 84 targets. The man did it on 84 targets, finishes wide receiver 15. So you can find the common denominator there and figure it out for yourself. And then I wanted to look at the following seasons and see what happened. Um, so I looked at it. In the following seasons, Sammy Watkins and Deshaun Jackson only played in eight games. I got hurt, so nothing really to go off there. Jennings followed up his 27, 2007 campaign with 80 catches on 125 targets, 1,292 yards, and nine tugs. So seems to me that like had Watkins or Deshaun Jackson played the next year, they probably would have had some big numbers because usually – when you have a player that plays really well on a low volume, in a low volume situation or a low volume role in the offense, the team's like, damn, this guy's pretty damn good. Let's get him more volume next year, which is what I think is going to happen with Stephon Diggs in 2018. That's why I'm so high on him, and I'm probably drafting him in the third round in a lot of my leagueies. Oh, let me plug this actually also. I get a lot of people asking me if they, um, if I can help them during their draft. And guys, I've opened up a spot on my website. If you go to bigdogsfantasy.com. Well, for one, you can scroll down and join my newsletter. All you got to do is scroll to the bottom and then put your information right here. 
and I will send you over a sleeper, a bust, and a tip and or trick every week. No spam, just straight value to your inbox if you want to sign up for the newsletter. That'd be cool. Uh, on the top of the website, though, you see the menu bar. You can go to Fantasy Consulting. I will actually, as you can see right here, um, get on a call with you, a video call, whatever it is, to help you out with your literal, your literal draft. All you got to do is click a time zone, I guess, set time zone, and then the spots open up. So my schedule is open up for any of you guys that are looking to draft. So you can draft time slots, but they will be filling up quickly, I'm, I'm assuming, as August goes by. So if you actually need help, um, you can read this little thing here. We can do a video call, phone call, we can text, whatever you're comfortable with. I don't really give a give a funk. I got YouTube's open. What you doing, girl? Um so yeah, if you need any help during your live draft, I mean, guys, I try to answer every question you throw in my way, so I'll, I can help you for free as much as I can, but I can't guarantee you I get back to you in time, you know? Uh, but if you want actual one-on-one, -on -one, like actually booking me person to person for uh, for a chance, then go do that on the website. Y'all know where to find me. Where are we going? Okay. Oh, this was a good one. This wasn't a wild stat, but I tweeted this out last year. So last year, Marquise Goodwin had the same amount of targets inside the opponent's 10-yard line. He had nine targets inside the opponent's 10-yard line, the same amount as Gronk, Mike Evans, Michael Thomas. He had more than Alshon Jeffrey, A.J. Green, and Marvin Jones. Jamarcus Garoppolo win, baby. We out, y'all. Wild stat Wednesday. Over the last two seasons, Jordan Howard has averaged 6.4 yards per carry out of the shotgun. Howard has averaged 4.0 yards per carry while lining up under center. So very good out of the shotgun, not so good under center. In 2017, last year, the Bears ran 50. They split those up, 50 and 50. So 50% 50 out of the shotgun, 50% of uh, plays under center. So they split their plays up in those two formations. In 2017, under Matt Nagy, so Matt Nagy is a new Chicago Bears coach, right? He was the former Chiefs offensive coordinator, and he took over play calling duties from Andy Reid a few a few weeks into the season. Under Matt Nagy last year, KC ran 72% of their plays from the shotgun, a much higher percentage than the Bears last year. And like I said, Jordan Howard, very good out of the shotgun. Matt Nagy ran a lot of his plays from the shotgun. So that should be very, very, very interesting to see if they continue that streak. And he understands that, um, that Jordan Howard is a much better... Um, runner from the shotgun so that's 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 a while a little while stat for you for you hang um, okay so that would be the last wild stat i'm gonna give you a sneak preview because today actually if you want to see today's wild stat you're gonna have to go follow me on instagram plug what a plug by me let's go let's go all right well that's gonna that's gonna wrap up today's video i hope you guys found it cool that you know i give you these little um these different pieces of content that are kind of different than the stuff you normally see on instagram and again, bro, I'm in Mexico right now, so don't at me, don't call me, don't text me, don't tweet me, don't gram me. I'm just kidding. Hit me up on every fucking platform. I would love that. But my responses will probably be in a drunkenly manner. Uh, so just letting you know, if you're asking me for fantasy advice, it's possible that I give you some shitty advice right now. I'm giving you that warning from August 8th to the 12th. I probably wouldn't take my advice. Friday is going to be another mock draft. It's going to be a bigger team. I haven't done like a big team mock draft, like 16 team or 18 team. So I'm going to go into probably a 16 team mock draft on Friday. Saturday, we have the release of my interview with Dr. Jesse Morse, where we talked about quarterbacks and running backs that were either injured last year or injured now and what their outlook for 2018 is going to be. So it's Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, um, who else is hurt? Oh, Andrew Luck, obviously. Leonard Fournette, Deonta Foreman, uh, David Johnson, things like that. And then I ask him guys that he, he might value more in drafts because people are taking their injury too seriously or guys that he's completely staying away from um, because of the injury concern, but people are not as concerned. So he has he has a kind of uh, advantage as a doctor knowing which uh, injuries are serious or which ones to worry about. So he's coming on Saturday. Sunday, uh, Mondays in the Muck Monday will be Julio versus Michael Thomas. Tuesday is the release of my interview with Andy Holloway from the Fantasy Footballers. That's going to be super dope. So stay tuned for that. And uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you're listening via podcast, I would highly, highly appreciate it if you left a, uh, a rating and review, guys. A lot of work goes into these bad boys. And uh, it means a lot when you guys do leave those reviews or comments or whatever. And, um, and that's really it. So I'll see you all on 
Friday. Peace.